good. Wuhan virus vaccines are supposed to be a global public good. But what happens when a vaccine manufacturer starts bullying? Governments are silenced, supplies are halted, and profits take precedence over saving lives. I'm not describing a hypothetical situation here. I am describing what Pfizer is doing. The American pharma giant, it is doing all of this. It is bullying countries to submit to its demands. We first reported about this back in February this year. While countries like India are sending free vaccines to poorer nations, there are companies like Pfizer which are bullying governments. Pfizer asked to be compensated for the cost of any future lawsuits. Pfizer wanted Argentina to put, and listen to this, put its bank reserves, its military bases, and its embassy buildings at stake as collateral. These are Pfizer's demands. Look at this. Number one, Brazil waives the sovereignty of its assets abroad in favor of Pfizer. That the rules of the land be not applied on Pfizer. Number three, that Brazil take into consideration a delay in delivery. Number four, that Pfizer is not penalized for it, for a delay in delivery. And number five, in case of any side effects, Pfizer be exempted from all civil liability. Eight months have passed since we reported this. Pfizer has not changed. It is still putting profits above public health. It is still forcing governments to bend to its will. An advocacy group has thrown up more details of what Pfizer does. It has accessed some confidential contracts of Pfizer. And we have a copy. These contracts are with nine countries and blocks. And the details are shocking. Desperate countries are being forced to make humiliating concessions to Pfizer. We went through the entire report. We found six very important points worth highlighting. Number one, Pfizer has the right to silence governments. It has forced countries to not talk about the deals they strike for shots. Number two, Pfizer controls the donations of its shots, not the country that buys them. Pfizer will decide where the shots go. Number three, Pfizer has secured an intellectual property waiver for itself, and this clause is particularly disturbing. If Pfizer is accused of intellectual property theft, governments will pay, not the company. Number four, if there are disputes, private arbitrators and not public courts will decide on them. Number five, Pfizer can go after state assets to secure its compensation. And number six, Pfizer calls the shots on all key decisions. It decides delivery timelines and more. These are very serious revelations. I'll give you some more details. Number one, Pfizer is silencing governments. How? Through contracts. These airtight contracts are at the center of everything. They can silence governments in ways you can't even imagine. Look at what happened in Brazil. Pfizer agreed to supply its Wuhan virus vaccines to Brazil. And it sneaked in this clause in the agreement to force Brazil to not share any specifics about its deal with Pfizer. Let me read it out for you. This is what it says. The Brazilian government is prohibited from making any public announcement concerning the existence, subject matter, or terms of the agreement, or commenting on its relationship with Pfizer without the prior written consent of the company. In other words, Brazil cannot talk about the Pfizer deal until it gets an approval from Pfizer in writing. This basically is a private company muzzling a government. And that's not all. Pfizer also gets to decide who will get the shot. Suppose someone wants to donate Pfizer shots to Brazil. Can they do it? They cannot. The Pfizer agreement restricts Brazil from accepting donations. No one can donate Pfizer vaccines to this country. They cannot use the Pfizer shot until they buy it. What happens if Brazil does not comply with these rules? The consequences will be serious. Let me quote from the report again. If Brazil were to accept donated doses without Pfizer's permission, it would be considered an uncurable material breach of their agreement, allowing Pfizer to immediately terminate the agreement. Upon termination, Brazil would be required to pay the full price for any remaining contracted doses. So Brazil will have to cough up the entire payment, and Pfizer won't even have to supply the full consignment of Wuhan virus shots. What happens if someone accuses Pfizer of stealing its vaccine technology, of intellectual property theft? The government 
will be forced to defend Pfizer. It's unbelievable. We had to read this twice to let it sink in. And guess what? At least four countries have been forced to protect Pfizer's patent. Meaning these governments are defending Pfizer for intellectual property theft. While the company is free to use anyone's intellectual property as it pleases. Colombia is one of these victims. I'll explain with an example. Suppose a domestic vaccine maker or any pharma company in Colombia goes to court and they accuse Pfizer of infringing their vaccine patent. Who will be the one fighting that case? Not Pfizer. Even though they're, they're, the, they're the accused party, it's not Pfizer and their lawyers who will be in court. It will be the Colombian government. The government will have to defend Pfizer. And if they lose the case, it will be the Colombian government that will have to pay the settlement, not Pfizer. What if these governments want to get out of these tough contracts? They won't be able to sue Pfizer at home. The matter will go to a secret panel of three private arbitrators in New York. Pfizer will be tried as per New York law and not the laws of the land where it sells vaccines. And these countries will pay heavily if they lose an arbitration. Pfizer can ask a government to shift control of state assets to compensate for losses. What kind of assets are we talking about here? Practically anything that a sovereign government owns. Foreign bank accounts, foreign investments, commercial property, state-owned airlines, even oil companies. Pfizer can take over any or all of these from a government. Basically, everything happens on Pfizer terms once a country decides to buy its vaccine. Even the delivery of shots is decided by the company. In Brazil, in Albania, in Colombia, Pfizer gets to decide the delivery timetable for vaccines and the countries will have to agree to whatever they're given, whenever they're given. Pfizer, of course, gets to decide the price. It sets the delivery timelines. It accepts accountability for nothing. And in case someone sues the company, it's the government that foots the bill for the damages, not Pfizer. There is no other way to describe Pfizer's business practices. This is vaccine terrorism. We